What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create custom filters for hype triggers so that you can detect anything that happens on the screen or almost anything text-based at least and turn it into an event and it will automatically grab a clip from that event. Before we get started, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not subscribed because 99% of you are not subscribed. And that's a pretty bad number. So if you like this one, be sure to click on that sub or thanks button below. So we're gonna create a custom config for the new The Finals beta. Uh, the Finals does not have a custom config. And you can see I've already made one here where I have all these cool interactions that automatically get um, uh, detected. But we're gonna go ahead and create a new config by pressing the plus sign next to select config and we're going to name this something so we're going to say okay, so the finals beta and then human name the finals beta and we'll hit create now we have a brand new uh, configuration that we can use to add custom triggers to so the first thing you want to do is find when something happens in your game all right, so we're gonna find a kill here. So let's go ahead and watch through until we see a kill, and I believe there's one coming up here. Getting flashed and flashed and flashed. All right, so that's a kill, and we know that it says eliminated here and by who we were eliminated. So we can detect the kill by detecting the word eliminated on this section of the screen. So we're gonna create a new trigger here by clicking add trigger. And then you'll see that it creates a square right here. We're gonna move that square by using the crop tools here. So we can drag it to the left and we're gonna make it much wider than it needs to be because if someone has a really long name, then it's gonna push that eliminated text out way to the left because the text is just centered. So then we're gonna raise this, that way it goes down here. That's about good. And then the width and height can be adjusted here as well. So we're gonna make the width very, very long to about right there. And the word we wanna detect is eliminated and that is in white. So the filter color is already in white, but if this was red, we could change this for example, to zero, zero, and it'll detect all the red text. You can see it here, but we want it to detect white. So we're gonna leave it at 255, 255. And you can see it's really messy. This black outline is really messy. So we're gonna change the threshold and lower the threshold that it's picking that up. And that's gonna hopefully get us a better view of this eliminated text. So it's starting to detect it. I might even raise it up a little bit. And We'll hit play and we can see that it is detecting eliminated right there. So that seems like a good threshold because it's gonna detect it. And we can go ahead and type what we want to detect here. So I'm gonna type elim and you can see that this turns green because it, detect, because it detected eliminated was here. We could type the whole thing and it would still work, but in cases where it doesn't detect the full word or maybe it's a little bit obscured, um, it might not detect that it's in a limb. So what I like to do is err on the side of caution and say just elim, if it detects elim, then it's gonna go ahead and detect that. Now we can also do some uh, trickery and sometimes it'll think a letter is a number. For example, this I, it might think it is a number one, for example. So we can say, uh, so we can use regex to actually add um, syntax to this. So we can say EL has to be there and then I might not be there. So we'll put a question mark and it might be a one and a question mark and then an M and see how it still is detected here because whether it's an I or a one, it'll still detect them. This is basically saying the letter could be an I and if it's not, then forget it. And then it could be a one if it's not, forget it, but it still needs the M. Um, so that's one trick to get the triggers to detect more often. Um, but you don't need to do that. You could just write elim and it'll detect it on its own. Then we can go ahead and choose how long the duration is before and after. So as I say, I want to um, get five seconds before the kill. Uh, so that we can see what happened leading up to the actual elimination. And then like, 
two and a half seconds after, or maybe even five seconds. If I want all my clips to be 10 seconds, maybe I always talk a lot after I get a kill. So I'm going to add five seconds after, and that'll save that um, clip as a full 10 seconds from the time that the trigger's seen, from the time the trigger ends, it'll add five before and after that. So let's go ahead and name this trigger. So we can say elimination, and we can give it an ID, elimination. And then uh, to visualize it, we can just uncheck it and check it again. And you can see that it's already found all these eliminations. Uh, you may need to run find clips in order to find those, but if I click on this one here, it shows eliminations here. There's one. Then if I click over here, it's the one we just looked at. And if I click over here, it gives us another clip where I got another limb. So it detects them pretty well, which is nice. Uh, we can add new triggers for almost anything that happens in the game. It looks like this is a win, so this will be a nice way to detect when we get a win. All right, so it shows winners on the screen. So let's go ahead and create a new trigger and we'll call this winners or uh, game win. And we can just use the ID win. And then we can adjust the location of this. Make it a little wider. Make it taller. There we go. <laughs> it even looks like it has a little trademark symbol at the end. So we are detecting winners here. And again, this is white text, so it's very easy without having to change the filter. But again, if you did need to detect something um, in a different color, you could just adjust the color here. We can change the threshold to clean this image up a little bit, get rid of some of the background there, not too much. Um, that looks pretty good. And then we can choose what text to detect. So we're gonna type winners, and you can see it's there. Now let's say for a win, I want 20 seconds before the win so that we can see what led up to it, and then just like five seconds after. That'll give us a nice long clip before and after of us discussing the win and uh, showing how we got it. So then we can go ahead and close this. And again, if it doesn't update the name, you just uncheck it and then check it. And you can see where we got those. You can see I found this one that we were on. And if I jump over here, it found another win. It gives us 20 seconds before. So it's leading up to it. And we won the match. So yeah, that's how you make custom triggers and hype trigger. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Peace. Yeah, might detect the architect.